السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. I love this. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you. I want to start off by saying, say Amin then. Amin. I want to start off by saying, all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only Him we worship and only Him we bow down to and only Him we turn to when we're in need. Also, I'd like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallah al Azim, it makes me so happy to see the man of youth in the masjid. But it's very upsetting that we are lacking the basic etiquettes from a Muslim in the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When it comes to all of this cheering and this and that, Akhi, you won't even be cheering like this for Hur al Ain, yet you're doing it for the next man. Come on, brothers, man. You mean I'm better than this, inshaAllah wa ta'ala. Yeah, you don't know what I mean. First and foremost, my brothers, Wallahi, maintain yourselves very, very well. You lot are the future to the Ummah. Hey, brothers, no touching stuff, Akhi. Please, yeah? Hey, brothers, come, come. Hey, Akhi. Akhi, let's be serious, bro. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I'm in a kindergarten. Come on, brothers, man. Brothers, lawi, Akhi. Wallahi. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm going to make this clear right now. For any of you that take me as a role model, take me as someone to look, after, to look up to, take me as someone of knowledge, take me as an imam, an ulama, whatever it may be, this is the best time for you to pack your stuff and keep it moving. I don't sit before you as someone of knowledge. I'm here to tell you from the mistakes that I've done that made me displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Made me displease my parents to such a level, it made me end up going to prison. At the very same time, to today, wallahi, I still have to look over my shoulders due to the fact of the problems that I got myself involved in. And one day it's going to be you. You know why it's going to be you? Because every single person thinks they're a bad boy. Like you already see it today, you already saw it today. There was feds outside. Man, they want to show this. Bad boy lost uh, lifestyle to the feds for what, bro? They're doing their job to come to the masjid to make sure you're safe. To make sure the people around you are safe. And uh, Muslims are giving them bad attitude. And bad manners. Akhi, where's our etiquette gone, bro? You see, there was a time, you all know Salah ad Ayyubi, right? The man that conquered Jerusalem. Jerusalem act. This is the man that opened the doors. In his teenage years, what happened, bro? My mom wasn't living the best of practicing as a Muslim. My mom wasn't praying it five times a day. The reality is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he chose to practice this deen properly, what did he do? He became someone that opened the doors of Jerusalem. And every single one of you could be that person. But everyone's thinking about themselves, bro. Everyone's thinking about their image in their community. Everyone... Allah is my witness. If mandam don't get their act together by being mature, I'm keeping it moving. Wallahi, I'm not. I expect every single one of you to unfollow me on social media anyway. That don't mean nothing to me. Where's the etiquette of a masjid, bro? Mandam are giggling and what are you, man, bro? No respect, Akhi, no respect. I don't care, I'm a waste man. You can do what you want, but do it while I'm not here. Do it while the people of knowledge are not here. Act how you want to act. But brothers are acting up for what purpose, bro? You lot are the future, Akhi. You lot are someone that our, my kids are going to pray behind. You lot are someone that's going to bring the glue. You are the glue to Muslims practicing their deen because of your etiquette and your manners. But everybody's thinking about them. So Allah, I'm going to make it clear. If there's a person that's sitting next to you, and he's that person that's nudging you, or kicking you, or tickling you. And if, Akhi, I'm telling you this now, this person don't want good for you, bro. If he's doing this in the house of Allah, he don't have respect for Allah, no one does he have respect for you. He's that same person that will drag you to Jahannam and lead you to do so much sins. And when he's in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I only, I only did words. It was his action that made him disbelieve this. His action that made him disobey you. But that's how important of the companionship is. Umar ibn Khattab, you all know who Umar ibn Khattab is, right? Radiallahu anhu. 
Umar ibn Khattab said, other than Islam, the biggest blessing that we ever had was companionship. Was companionship. Your friends. Look at the friends around you, bro. Right now, look at the friends around you and ask yourself this. Ask it. Are these brothers really what good for me in the Akhirah? Are these are going to be the same brothers that are going to be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala butt naked and going to be pointing fingers at me saying, here's the reason why I'm in this situation. Here's the sinner. Here's the one that pushed me to commit sins. But this is the reality. Because if you don't control your companionship in this dunya, let me make it clear to every single one of you here. Your companionship are going to lead you astray to such a level you're going to lose your deen. And brothers here, I know probably people come here, they, I don't know why people are sliding my DM telling me I'm coming to swat you today with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> let me make it clear, brothers, brothers, let me make it clear to that brother, let me make it clear to that brother, and let me make it clear to that sister as well. Wallahi, I love you both. Walhamdulillah, you decided to come to the masjid. But wallahi, it is upon you, O sister, or O brother, that have come to the masjid, knowing that you're in a relationship, you give that up for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, the reward is tremendous. The reward is as big as mountains. The reward is something that will lead you to Jannah, inshallah. Stop delaying. Stop delaying yourself from becoming successful. And how do you... Some people say, bro, but I'm on roads. I'm making two bags a day, three bags a day. Why am I going to change that for nine to five? I say to you, my bro, but you're miserable. You've got rental cars that you crash every other week. So you've got to pay that out. My bro, there's been times where drug dealers are coming to me. Wallahi, they said, I am scared of forget. I'm scared of giving up drugs because the olders are going to do me in. My brother, come to the house of Allah. Speak to the people of knowledge. Speak to men that are inside the masjid that can help you. Do not be amongst those that are scared and you're being forced into do, doing drug dealing or being forced into carrying things that you don't want to, bro. We're Muslims, Akhi. We pray, why are men taking serious that they have to carry a knife or do drug dealing and see which bissa that they have to sell drugs to instead of their five daily prayers? The difference between us and the non-believers is what? Louder, bro. The, I'm going to ask you one more time. The dip, relax, brother. Relax. Man, them. I can even know Dirk don't have concerts like this. Akhi. We're better than this, bro. The difference between us and the non-believers is... If you don't know this, bro. If we don't know this, yeah. Why do we like this? Akhi, I was once upon a time in your position, Akhi. I was 13, 14 years old. When my parents used to tell me, yeah, Amen, it's time to pray, I used to say, no worries, mum. I'm used to there banning at PS2. Your man didn't know them. I'm old school. We used to ban at PS2. We used to play Pro Evolution. <coughs> we used to play Crash Bandicoot. All of these things. Allah, in fact, the moment my mum and my dad's telling me it's time to pray, what do I used to do? No worries, mum. No worries. I'd kiss my teeth, I the moment I used to hear footsteps come up the stairs, what do I do? Straight away I get into sajda. It's like you're hiding that away from your parents when in reality you're hiding it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you think you can hide anything from Allah? You can never do that, bro. Wallah al azim if you know of a place right now that you could go to, that you could commit every single sin under the sun without Allah watching you, billionaires will come to you, bro. Sorry about that. Someone's going to have a shower soon. We'll be spitting. <laughs> Wallah al billionaires, you know billionaires, they will, come, they will come to you with their money and they would say to you, wherever this place is, I want to be able to sin freely, including Muslims, ya akhi. But there is no place. There's no place where the, the, the insan would not be, what's it called? That cannot be seen. You see, they're one of the tabi'een. One of the tabi'een said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels with intellect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the haywan, the animals, with what? With desires. But how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the insan? He created the insan with a bit of 
desire and a bit of intellect. So if you, my brother, and you, my sister, that is following your desires, best believe you're going to be as low as the haywan. You're going to be as low as the animals. But if you use your intellect in worshipping Allah and obeying Allah and being grateful to Allah and making sure you stick to your five daily prayers, you're going to be as high as the malaika. If not, even higher than them. Higher than the angels. And look at it, bro. Would you rather be someone like Akhi? Look, there is good desires. We have desire to eat, right? That's perfectly fine. We have to eat in order for us to survive and function and so on and so forth. There's a desire to sleep. Alhamdulillah, you sleep in order for your body and your organs to function so you can have more energy for the next day. There are certain desires that have been put in place for you to better your life. But there are certain desires, my bro, that we're going, we're going towards the brothers and sisters who are going and committing every act under the sun where the sister's becoming pregnant. Then the sister is coming into my DM telling me the brother promised me marriage. I say to the sister, Wallahi, let me make it clear to every single sister. Men are scummy. Men are waste men. Except for the one that worships Allah and fears Allah to his best of his abilities. If a man respects you and a man wants good for you, a man would knock on the door of your parents, bro. MashaAllah, brothers are still talking. I did swear by Allah, you know. If mandam don't take this seriously, Rabb al I'm keeping it moving. I've come away from my own wife and kids to and see every brother's beautiful face for me to be disrespected because man can't be mature. Come on, brothers, man. Akhi, look at what's happening in Gaza, Ak. Brothers and sisters are being tortured and raped and killed because they believe in la ilaha illallah. And we believe in la ilaha illallah, bro. So we, we should act upon it. We don't have planes above us that are dropping bombs. But brothers, mashallah, tabarakallah, they think to themselves, it's okay, bro. Man's beefing Abdul Rahman and Abdul Kareem and Abdullah. And for what? For a postcode. And this is what it's come down to, Akhi. Wallah al-Azim. I said to myself, bro, I said to myself, one masjid that I got love for, two stuff, like two masjid that I got love for, that I thought to myself, I can never get into problems with, was Masjid Quba and Masjid Darul Salam. Two beloved masjid to me. Little do I know, bro. I'm finding out the brothers in this community that are hafiz of the Quran, that are being raised upon the Quran and the Sunnah. And they're going the path of shaitan and they're forgetting the path of Rahman. What's going on with us, bro? Why are we desiring, why are we desiring these things? My brother, I've never ever done drug dealing because I saw the misery that the drug dealers around me were getting up to, bro. They were miserable. They were selling drugs and there was no happiness in their body. There was no happiness upon their face. What about the people that were committing zina around me? My brother, you look at them, they have darkness in their face. We know of stories where people have died while committing zina. Imagine you return back to Allah in the state where you're fornicating. What are you going to say to Allah? Allah, this was going to be my last time. Allah, I was going to repent after this. Allah, I tried my best. Allah, I was still praying. Allah, how is your parents going to look at you, bro? When the knock on the door comes and says to you, yeah, oh auntie, oh uncle, you need to come and identify the body of your son or your daughter because she died in a state of intercourse. Or, what about the man them that get up to no good behind closed doors, Akhi? Let's not beat around the bush. We all got smartphones, right? Yeah? Don't shake your head, Akhi. You somehow got a smartphone somewhere. Huh? Alhamdulillah, you lost it on the bus. Alhamdulillah, bro. Why are you clapping, Akhi? Clapping is for a woman. I love you, bro. I love you. The reality is, yeah, we're getting up to no good. Brothers, brothers, settle down, bro. Brothers, and I'm saying this because even sisters are getting up to no good. And I'm sorry to the imams, I'm sorry to the uncles, I'm sorry to the fathers, but I'm going to say how it is. If you don't like it, at the end of the day, there's hardly any imams that are talking about this situation. My brother, 
There's a lot of men and even women nowadays that are addicted to pornography. So, brother, look, man, they would say, the same guy that says astaghfirullah out loud is probably the same guy that's doing it. The reality is, bro, we have smartphones, akhi, that is making us get up to no good. But there's other things you could do on your smartphone that can benefit yourself and your deen, that can benefit your dunya and your akhirah. Why are you choosing this? I said, okay. Why are we choosing? Why are we choosing this path of Wallah al Adim where Jannah is for free? Jannah is for free, bro. But yet, the path of Jahannam, you smoke weed, it costs you money. You buy vape, it costs you money. You do shisha, it costs you money. You go clubbing, it costs you money. You buy alcohol, it costs you money. All of these things that are displeasing to Allah. That's actually for your desires to lead you into Jahannam. It all costs money. Why are we forgetting that the deen of Allah has been honored to you, O oh Muslims? You. How many of us have woken up today that are going to die upon kufr? It takes one word for us to commit kufr, bro. And how many people that have woken up as a non believer and they've died as a Muslim by the end of the day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided them. Wallah, I know of a brother 14 years old in Ireland. Before he took his shahada, he said to himself, I want to memorize Surah Fatiha. How many of us even know how to pronounce the surah? Man, them, Wallah, I saw it. I'm parked up outside this window and that window. Whoever was playing these two windows during Salatul Isha, I see them man nudging each other and headbutting each other during Salah. You're standing in front of Allah. And you expect victory on Muslims when you're not even taking Allah seriously. You're not taking your Lord seriously. And every single day, your heart, your soul, your organs seeks permission from Allah just to wake up. But for him to be disobeyed, for him to take the salah as a joke, and this is what the Ummah has come to, and we expect victory. We like to share stuff about what's happening in Gaza. We put on our story. We put on our WhatsApp story. We put it on Snap. MashaAllah, let's make dua for them. Wallahi, you are a kadhab. You are a liar. You're only doing it because you want people to say to you, MashaAllah, the brother's with the trend. The brother thinks about the ummah. The brother believes that the ummah needs victory. Reality is, bro, you're only doing it for the wrong reasons. And you expect victory, Akhi. We're dying, bro. We're suffering. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Akhi, you need to understand this, bro. He himself identified this ummah as what? One body. I couldn't give a damn if you're Pakistani or Bengali or Somali or Iraqi. I don't care. Your real culture is la ilaha illallah. Your DNA. Akhi, it's not your DNA from where you come from, bro. Your DNA should be the Quran and the Sunnah. You go by that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what color you are. Black, white, blue, pink. I can't give a damn if you're an avatar. The reality is, bro, you as Muslims, we are forgetting one of the reasons why we're going astray is because of culture. So shout out to the fathers and the uncles that when a pious man comes to your door asking for your daughter's hand because of his color skin, because of him being from a different tribe, you want to decide to shut the door on him. Let me make it clear to you, with your sick heart, with your sick individual as a mindset, I don't care if you're my dad, I'm going to tell you how it is. It is not from a Muslim to be racist. Who was the first creation to be racist? Can someone tell me? Shaitan. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told the jinns, and the, and, the, and the angels and every single creation. Say that again, Habib. Hayak Allah, Habib. Allah. Is someone laughing, bro? Hayak Allah, Habib. May Allah bless you, Akhi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels and everything that He's created to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. Shaitan, because of his arrogance and his pride. How? How can you allow me, Ya Rabb, to prostrate 
to someone that's made out of clay when I'm made out of fire. So shaitan started the chain of racism. And it is upon us to bring that deen back into our, house, into our households. Brothers, if you want to come to the masjid akhi, for jokes, and you want to come and take uh, your deen as a joke, you want to come and do your little one minute video to post on TikTok and Instagram because a waste man called Aki Amen has come up, let me make it clear to you, bro. There's going to come time. Got some dead skin on my lip, bro. There's going to come some time. Bar of love, Aki, it's halal. I don't know what's happening, bro. But there's going to come a time, Aki, where the doors of mercy has been shut. And there's a hadith that says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forever forgive you for as long as the rattle of the soul doesn't reach your throat. For as long as the rattle of the soul doesn't reach your throat. How many of us are even promised tomorrow, Aki? How many of us have the intention that, wallahi, when we leave here, we're going to go and commit haram straight away with the manda, with the, with the guys that we came with? Aki, if this is your intention, change it, bro. Fix up. I want to learn from you. Majority of you probably even know more Quran or Hadith than me. The reality is, Akhi, this doesn't make me religious. My beard don't make me religious. My guy, this folk don't make me religious. It is your actions that you do in private and in public that betrays yourself to be a Muslim. That people could say, you know what, I fell in love with Islam because of someone so person. But you know what? we got to give a big shout out to Abs. Because Abs forgot about his name, Abdullah. What about Fats? What about Fatima? You change your name from Fatima to Fats. Relax. 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 The reality is... Brothers. Brothers. The reality is that the Muslims have become a joke because we've turned to change our ways to please the people of the West. Don't you feel disrespected? Don't you feel like you've disrespected the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Wait. My brothers, be mature inshallah. Yeah, say sallallahu alayhi wasallam. but I don't know why brothers are still going on. But the reality is, don't you feel ashamed that your name is Muhammad and you told your co-workers and you told your friends in the mandem, yo, call me Mo. Like, come on, bro. You got the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's name. And this is how you believe in it. And this is how you betray yourself to be. My brothers, let me make it clear. And this is something I'm going to say this. How many of you still have your mom and dad? Put your hand up. Allahu alhamdulillah. Akhi, let me make it clear to every single one of you that's here, yeah? Wallahi. Wallahi, there isn't one night that I don't cry myself to bed. Because I miss my mother. And for those of you that still have your mothers around, Wallahi, you lot don't understand the treasure, the gem that you have underneath your roof. My brothers were better than this, Akhi. Our mothers that carried us for nine months, you want to go out of your way and disrespect her, but yet you want to look into do five years for your mandem, but not go five minutes to the shop for your mum. My brother, I wish I can have that phone call that comes in, and it's my mum calling me. I wish, I wish I could have that message where my mother is sending me a voice note. Wallah al azim just a few weeks ago, our mother suddenly died. Suddenly, for the, she had no health uh, conditions, no nothing. My brother, she was young. She messaged her son at 5.45. 5.45, telling him, when are you going to come home? Because food is going to be ready soon. Wallah al azim and this is something that hurts because I only heard it today because it's a community that I've gone to visit. I only found out today that 15 minutes after she sent that message, she passed away. 15 minutes, Akhi. And this boy, this boy, he wishes that he replied back to his mom. He wishes he answered her phone call. Both she was young in her 40s. That's not old. You're still a youth. But yet death has no age. 
What is the what is the slogan for the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Sami'na wa ata'na. Why have we gone part to be part of a nation that was a part of the nation of Musa alayhi salam? They used to say what? We used to, we say what? Sami'na wa ata'na, which means we hear and we obey. But what was Musa alayhi salam's nation, bro? We hear and we disobey. This is what we've come down to. Our Muslim brothers and sisters, they hear the word hijab and they say there's no command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in the Quran. That's number one. Let me make it clear to every single sister. Wallahi, as Muslims, as your brother Ayman, I believe you are the backbone of this ummah. We men, we've lost our way. We've become weak. We've become weak with our actions. We've become weak with our manners and our character and our behavior. We've become very weak as men. You know why? Because we've neglected the Quran and the Sunnah. But the women that are going to be rising, the next future leaders of our community, of our cities, of our countries, and of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you got to give a big shout out to the sisters. Wallah al azim without them, without them, we would be weak. We care them how much we are right now. We care them what we are. And the reality is, bro, let me ask you, I'm going to ask the brothers three questions now. And I go to every talk and I mention this. These three questions, I expect every, bro, I want this building to come down with your passion and love. And if we die, we die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I want you to scream it all together. No, none of this wishy-washy stuff, yeah? I'm going to ask you three questions. You answer it with your hearts, not with your mouth, with your passion, with your love for this deen. Are you not ready, yeah? Yes. The first question is, who is your Lord? Allah. Where is your deen? Islam. And who is your prophet? Muhammad. Now I expect every single one of you to answer those exact same questions with your mouth closed. With your mouth closed. Who is your Lord? Where is your deen? And who is your prophet? Wallah al azim let me make it clear to every single one of you here now. If you lot moved and acted and behaved and ruled by the Quran and the Sunnah, you will answer the same way in the grave like you've done. With love and passion and with contentment in your heart, with confidence in your heart that you answered it. But if you didn't rule by these three questions and you answered like the second time by humming, Akhi, this ain't gonna get you nowhere past the grave, Akhi. You're gonna get punished. You're gonna have the punishment of the grave. You know why, Akhi? You claimed you worshipped Allah. You claimed you loved the Quran. You claimed you followed the Sunnah. But your actions and your behavior in public and secret went against the book of Allah and the law of Allah completely. So let me make it clear to every single brother that's here and every single sister that's here. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He said, He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that wallahi every single person in my ummah is going to be forgiven. Who is he talking about? He's talking about us. For those of you that are here, except for the one that publicly and openly sins. So for the man them that are going past the girls, and they're putting their hand around the girls, their arm around the girls, and, and the girls are doing this, no face, no case, and, and the brother's hiding himself, and he's got vapes in his face. Let me make it clear to you, bro. For every single person that saw that snap, or saw that video, or saw that picture of you and that girl in a haram relationship, while you're bunning, while you're committing zina, while you're doing every act under the sun to displease Allah, Every single one of us is going to vouch against you in front of Allah. You're going to have the whole ummah that saw that video is going to speak against you. And let me make it clear to you. And this is, and this is from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever loves his risk, what's his risk? His provision, his wealth in every aspect. That's your mental state, your physical state, that's your financial state. You name it. Whoever loves his risk to be more and his life longer and let him join the ties of kinship with his family. 
Ties of kinship with his parents. This is the word of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I know people that have neglected their parents because of their girlfriends or their boyfriends. I know people that have run away from their home because of their haram relationship. My brother and sister, wallahi, we are better than this. There's another one that says this, yeah? Whoever breaks the ties of kinship will not enter Jannah. But the ties of kinship, not with your friends, not with your siblings, is the ties of kinship with your parents. So let me make it clear. If you are the one that cuts ties with your mom and dad, understand this, you would never see Jannah, nor will you ever smell it. And this is the reality. This is the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do you not want this? I am gonna, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna ask you now, yeah. I'm gonna, actually, I'm not gonna answer everyone's question. So I'm not gonna take everyone's answers. So I'm gonna ask one question. I'm gonna take a few answers. The question is, actually, what do you expect from Islam? Someone said Jannah, peace, Jannah. Anyone else on this side? What do you expect from Jannah? I mean, from Islam, huh? Guidance, Allahu Akbar. What do you expect from Islam? Huh? Peace, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Guidance, Allahu Akbar. Who else from that side? Huh? Brother, brother, brother. Relaxation, brother. Tranquility. Yes, we bro. Huh? The way of life. Happiness. You don't know this. Relaxation. For dunya wal akhirah. Knowledge, that's it. Now look at this now, yeah? My brothers and sisters, now look at this. Yes, Akhi, last one. Huh? Khahi. Love. love. Allahu Akbar. You love and hate for the sake of Allah. Facts, bro. If you and every single answer that I got was Jannah, peace, love, knowledge, uh, tranquility, you name it. Akhi, every single thing that you mentioned, you will get if you act upon the Quran and the Sunnah, upon the understanding of the companions with Tabi'een. Simple. I call myself Muslim. I'm nothing other than that. I'm a Muslim that follows the Quran, the Sunnah, and upon the ways of the, the companions and the Tabi'een that came after them. This is me. And I expect every single person that does this. And someone came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stated this. And I'm going to finish up on this. We're going to take... A Q&A and then we're going to leave inshallah because it's hot. But let me, let me end on this. Someone, is everything all right back there, yeah? Someone came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, what do I need to do to get to Jannah? What do I need to do to, to believe in Allah? You know, I'm just paraphrasing. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you, shahada is your first. What's your second? Salah. Salah. I love, I love, I love the fact when the community know their stuff. The second was salah, sah? After that is? Huh? Hold on. What's after that? Zakat. What's the last one? Hajj. If you believe in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and you act upon it, you will enter Jannah. The following thing is Salah. You pray your five daily prayers, inshallah, you will go to Jannah. What's after that? So, if you fast during the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, brothers, why are brothers getting up? Hey, brothers, please sit down because brothers behind you can't see. Barakallahu feekum. If you. Well, barak habibi. So, the reality is, if you pray your five daily prayers, you get to Jannah. The fourth thing was zakah, which is how much percent? 2.5%. 2.5% of your wealth. 2.5% of your wealth. The fifth thing is what? Hajj. Only if you do it. So he himself, the companion said, I believe in La ilaha illallah and you as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger and Prophet of Allah. I will only, I listen up brothers man. He said I will only pray my five daily prayers. I don't need to pray sunnah. I don't need to pray uh, any other salahs that is not required for me to pray my five daily prayers. He said when it comes to fast, he said when it comes to fasting, I would not fast my Mondays and Thursdays. I will not fast my white days. Well, I'm not going to fast. I will only fast during the month of Ramadan. The full thing, huh? Huh? Akhi, the brother said this, yeah? 
He said, I'm only going to fast your min, uh, Ramadan. The fourth thing, and he might have added that, but I didn't go too deep into that, so it could be true. The fourth thing was zakat. He said, I'm never going to give charity except for the 2.5% of my wealth. Every single year, nothing more, nothing less. He said, the fifth thing is, I will only do hajj when I am in a stable position or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you do only these things, you will enter Jannah. This is how simple your deen has become. So this is how simple your deen is. Why are we making it become something very, very difficult? Why do we feel like we need to do above and beyond when reality is something simple? Everything else that you do is a bonus. My dear respected brothers and sisters, it's a bonus. You will get to Jannah. It depends on the level. It depends on how quickly you enter Jannah.